Greetings from England to all NCTM readers. Over the years, I have spent many a happy mechanics lesson explaining that 45 degrees is the best angle to throw a cricket ball if you want it to go the furthest. OK, baseball. So I was a bit surprised to read that not one of the athletic sports that are trying to achieve maximum distance, shot, put, javelin, etc., use 45 degrees. The angle is more like 31 degrees. So what's going on here? Well, you will have read from the article of the standard parametric equation for the uh, parabolic motion and I'm just going to select it and copy it and hopefully it'll go straight into autograph because it's just text. Uh, first of all we'll set up autograph in degrees and make sure the whiteboard mode is on so we have the on-screen keyboard. So I'm going to right click enter equation and here you can see you can just paste it in. Now it's taken the alpha as a regular A character uh, but we do have an alpha character if you wanted to use that. And we're just going to have a look at the constants now. We want to set the angle to 45. We want to set the gravitational acceleration to 9.81. Uh, leave the height at 1 metre. Some, some of them do squat down quite a bit to throw these shots. And velocity of 10 metres per second. We'll try that and see how we get on. OK. Ah. Uh, looks like the plotting's gone a little awry. So let's just investigate this for a minute. Uh, we'll just... Um, select and double click on the, the graph and have a look at the startup options. Uh, it's a parametric equation with trig expressions and so it's rather assumed that the t, t variable is in degrees but uh, we'll set it to 0 to 5 in steps of 0.01 and uh, that should do the job nicely and we get a nice smooth curve. Um, if we set the slow plot going you can see that it's possible to show the motion flying through the air pretty much as it would in reality and you can stop and start at will. Uh, now we'll just draw some other lines. I'm going to put in uh, y equals h because it's the horizontal distance that we normally do our analysis on. That's the 45 degree angle from classical mechanics. So we'll push that across there and we'll also um, put on the x-axis, which the equation is y equals zero, because I want to look at the intersection with that, because that's the distance that's actually measured uh, in the Olympics sport. All right. Now I want to have a look at some intersections. I'm particularly interested in that intersection there, and if you press control and go to the point mode, you can find intersections of this nature, and uh, and they've got they are now marked with points. Now I'm going to put a vertical line through there so that it's nice and easy to see uh, where the distance is and we'll put a vertical line through that one as well. Now I'm going to put a point on the curve at time 0 and I want the snap to be 0 0.1 and you can see that what that means is that the point is at time 0 but if we drag it around it'll go up in steps of 0.1 but first I'm going to add a velocity vector and a acceleration vector. Acceleration of course is just straight downwards 9.81 and the velocity will change as you go along the curve. So we'll just drag this along. These are in 0 0.1 increments of time. So we'll leave it back at the origin. Uh, now we want to just measure the angle so we can have this to see. So I'm putting uh, points on the uh, y equals h line and the vector selecting them in the anti-clockwise, counterclockwise direction measuring angle and there we have it. 45 degrees. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. Double click and make the arc size 16 so that it's a bit bigger. That's better. Now we'll get the constant controller out. This parametric equation is full of constants, uh, all of which can be varied using this uh, uh, nifty controller here. We can vary the step and the value. So I'm going to change the step to 1, so I can now change the angle in steps of 1 degree. And you can see that at 45 degrees, it's um, certainly the maximum on the horizontal distance. What I'm going to do now, just to make this a little bit clearer, just put a random point somewhere and a vertical line, so I can drag it on top of the two lines that we already put there. And that will enable us to see more clearly that these really are maximum distances or perhaps they're not. Let's have a look at the 45, 46, 47. Yes, it's certainly coming back in again. And as we go back to 45, it's clearly the maximum, but it looks like it's because of the extra distance and height that it's dropping, 
around about 42 degrees is the maximum distance along the ground. The classical theory we're using here, of course, assumes that the velocity of throw is the same regardless of the angle. And it'd be quite interesting to have a look at this. And so let's just change the velocity. And uh, you'll see that you only have to increase the velocity, uh, um, say, 10%. And you've got a huge increase in distance of throw. Um, so that's really rather important. Now there's some research at Brunel University that had a look at this and had a look at the velocity that you could achieve from different angles of throw. So I've looked at this spreadsheet data. It's only three points, but it's enough to get a feel for this. So we're going to plot these as a set of data. Just right-click, paste them in. Notice the column headers come too, so if we tick those two boxes, we label the graph correctly. So we've got three points here which are not quite linear, so I'm going to do a best fit parabola through those, because that seems to be a very good fit. Excellent. So if we select the function and look at the text for it, we'll get the equation of the parabola, because that's what we really need. Um, first of all, I'm going to convert that to static text and do a bit of fiddling around here. I'm going to put V where Y was and A for the angle where X was. So we get the function of A. There it is. Um, and then we can just uh, make that look nice. Um, I really want that function in the equation in the first page. So I'm just going to put some parentheses around this so that I can then copy that expression just to there and right click copy perfect so if we now go back to the other page we can have a look at the original equation the parametric equation and substitute for V this expression for A so that uh, the velocity which is now a function of the angle uh, can be substituted there and so we get a, a very long parametric equation now that is dependent only on angle, not on velocity. So immediately you see that it goes a lot further. I don't need to tidy up this graph a little bit. I'm just going to look at the axes now, the appearance, and change the font so that it's uh, smaller. So it's a 14 point. That should do the job nicely. Not quite, so we'll just get rid of the word equation 1. Cancel that. And that should tidy up the equation. Perfect. We need to tidy up the axes now. It's uh, off the end, so we'll just change the maximum to 20. That should produce uh, a reasonable picture. Excellent. We'll have a look at the constant controller now, and you see that we've no longer got V to vary, just A for angle, uh, and see what effect this has. And clearly, if you increase the angle, you're not going to throw so far. Uh, and we're looking really at the right hand end of the lower one to see where the maximum throw is and it looks to me as around about 33 actually rather than 31 gives the maximum distance so uh, then I started thinking well actually we set the height to be 1 let's move the height up to say 2 meters which is probably more appropriate for javelins and uh, tall shot putters and see what difference that makes so now we're going to uh, vary the angle again and uh, I'm going to move these two vertical lines along so that I can see where these two these two verticals change as we change the angle. And you can see that uh, that 31 is actually the maximum distance along the horizontal ground for a two meter tall person using this data from Brunel University. Fairly convincing, I would say.